Gali Mera and welcome to our guide on the top things to do in Crete, the largest and most diverse island in Greece. We spent two weeks exploring some of the most popular attractions, plus a few off the beaten track favourites. It's a huge island that has aspects of many of the other Greek islands all in one place. It's perfect for first timers to Greece or if you're someone that loves to explore on the holiday. In this video we'll guide you through some of the most amazing places to visit on this stunningly beautiful island, including turquoise lagoons, historic sites, mountain ranges, fast lakes and some of the best beaches you'll ever see. Starting off our list is the world famous Elefonisi beach. Located a one and a half hour drive from Hania town to the far southwest of the island, Elefonisi is a collection of beautiful white sand beaches all surrounding a central lagoon. The beach is also famous for its pink sand which glistens in the sunlight. Relax in the warm lagoon at midday, go for a walk amongst nature and check out the small fish that live in the lagoon. There are many sunbeds on the beach that you can use as a base and it will cost you 10 euros for two sunbeds and a parasol. Head down to the far end of Elefonisi Lagoon, away from the main entrance, for quite a place to relax for the day. If you're renting a car, then it's worth noting that the drive down to Elefonisi is a bit challenging, so we recommend a tour for those that aren't confident driving. Be sure to set off early to avoid the traffic. Arriving before 10am is perfect. Out of all the traditional towns in Crete, Hany was a favourite. Historically, many tourists choose to stay in the Heraklion area to the east, but Hany is quickly becoming the new hotspot for those who want a taste of Cretan history and a much more charming destination. The main attraction here is the picturesque Venetian harbour that dates back to the 1300s. It's surrounded by a fortress, a towering lighthouse and a promenade of colourful shops and restaurants. Within town, you then have a collection of narrow streets where locals and tourists meet and there's a real upbeat atmosphere. Have a browse in the Indo market and pick up some Christian olive oil and honey. It's Hanya's wonderful architecture that makes it one of the best places to visit and the beauty of a stop here is simply walking around looking at the sights. No trip to Crete would be complete without a boat trip. Hop on the ferry from Kissimmee's port, where it will then take just over an hour to reach the stunning Balos Lagoon. Balos is known to be the most photographed beach in Crete, famous for its crystal blue waters and wild natural beauty. Wade through the warm salt water of the lagoon, where you'll see the little fish swimming past, or grab a sun lounger and enjoy relaxation with the view. For all you explorers out there, we recommend taking a pair of water shoes as it can be quite rocky in some areas. The next stop on the boat tour is Gramvusa, which is a small island that's located a few miles north of Balos, around 10 minutes away by boat. Gramvusa is famous for its Venetian fortress and turquoise blue water. There's also an old shipwreck in the middle of the bay, 
providing some excellent photo opportunities and a popular snorkeling spot. You can take the 20 minute hike up the hill to see Grand Vusa Fortress or kick back and relax on the beach below. If you do decide to visit Balos in Grand Vusa, you can either board the ferry from Kisamos, book a private boat tour or drive to Balos yourself by car. The road to get here is two miles of gravel path, so we personally opted for the boat option. You can also explore Grand Vusa that way, which is only accessible by boat. After a few hours exploring Hanya town, why not visit Hanya's magnificent monastery, Agia Triada Tizagaroli. It's one of the most picturesque monasteries in the island and is located a short drive from Hanya airport to the northeast of town. The monastery sits at the mountain top in the countryside, setting the scene for a sample of Greek Orthodox history. It was built in the 17th century and is a beautiful place to explore no matter your interests. Take a moment to marvel at the grand entrance and then walk up the steps into the heart of the monastery. Inside you'll find flower decorated corridors, intricate terracotta architecture and plenty of turrets, viewpoints and archways. Its rich history is apparent throughout the building and it'll entertain you for at least an hour or so. A short drive down the road from Agia Triada Monastery, you have the hidden beach cove of Sitten Leimani. This hugely popular but tiny slither of beach has made a name for itself solely because of the unique beach scenery on offer. The canyon cove is formed between two rock faces, creating a stunning beach and natural cove where you can swim. Slightly off the beaten track, best place to visit in Crete is the vast Lake Kornas. Situated between Hania and Rithymno, the lake is surrounded by mountain scenery on one side, with farmlands on the opposite shore. Turquoise water meets sandy shore, and it provides a setting for some of the best nature scenery that Crete has to offer. We recommend visiting on the morning while it's nice and quiet. Go for a longer walk around the lake, and then embark on a boat trip. You can rent a paddled boat from one of the local vendors. It costs 10 euros for an hour and is the best place to spot the magnificent turtles. We also advise trying to visit on a sunny day as it's much easier to see the turtles. In addition to the lake, there are a number of small local restaurants, gift shops and nature trails. We visited Kotilo Kiko Gorge on our first day in Crete, and in no way were we were prepared for the scenery that greeted us on arrival. Located deep within the mountains towards the south of the island, Kotilo Kiko Gorge is a deep valley that descends between the mountain slopes. Towering cliffs around you as you are driving through the gorge, and you can then park your car to go explore. Parking is free, but it's advisable to arrive early as parking spaces are limited. Walk down the winding set of stone steps and you'll find an old monastery perched on the edge of the ridge. It overlooks a beautiful array of waterfalls and has views of the entire valley. The nature scenery on offer here will really blow you away. We recommend checking out the waterfall and then going a small trail walk through the centre of the gorge. Be warned though, it can get very hot during the day, so arrive early for cooler temperatures. Rithymno is a historic beach town that's positioned in the middle of Crete, to the north of the island. Its central location and a wide variety of tourist amenities makes it a great place to stay, 
but is also worth visiting for a day trip. It boasts a long beach and promenade that's full of bars, cafes, restaurants and sun lounges. A short walk along from the beach, you then have a colourful marina of boats, with many boat trips heading out to explore the coastline. Finally, and the highlight of any visit, is the old town centre of Rithymno. Its old Venetian harbour and lighthouse is what tourists flock to see, and the nearby streets are full of character. Market stalls, street food stands and hidden traditional restaurants can all be found in the labyrinth of alleyways. The grand attraction of town is a hilltop castle. Pay the entrance fee of four euros for a walk around the castle walls where you have a panoramic view of the town below. If you're interested in ancient Greek history or simply want to step foot in Europe's oldest city, you can't leave Crete without discovering Knossos. This vast collection of Bronze Age ancient ruins was once the ceremonial and political heart of Minoan civilization. The ancient temples, chambers and pathways have been preserved very well and you can spend a good hour or so exploring on foot. Learn about King Minos and the myths behind the labyrinths of Minoans, including the widely known story of Theseus and the Minotaur. We recommend joining a guided tour or listening to an audio walkthrough guide to get a true appreciation of the ruins. With the rich history of Venetian rule and one of the last remaining leper colonies in Europe before it closed, Spinalonga Island is well known to be one of the best places to visit in Crete. Its story is known across Greece and it makes a truly unique attraction to visit during your time on the island. You'll need a boat to get there and they depart from the mainland towns of Alunda and Plaka every day. As you sail over to Spinalonga, your attention will be captured by its castle turrets and tall fortifications. The boat docks up and you then have an hour or so to explore the island at your leisure. Take a guided tour or roam free and learn about the leper colony that once made Spinalonga their home. Top things to see here include the remnants of old houses and other town buildings, the Grand Venetian Fortress and plenty of viewpoints. You'll have some of the best views of the coastline at every step you take. Situated to the far east of Crete and overlooking Mirabello Bay, Alunda is a charming tourist town that's popular with British holiday seekers. Its elevated coastline provides a scenic background for a relaxing day out, and its hotels, cafes and restaurants all have amazing views. Alunda town itself is small but quaint, with a number of shops and restaurants to check out. Many people visit Alunda as part of a boat trip to the nearby Spinalonga Island, so you can visit both locations in a full day excursion. 
take time to have lunch at one of its top rated restaurants, relax on the beach, or go for a long walk along the promenade and over the sandbar to see the Lunda windmills. Similar to Hania Town, Heraklion is a popular place amongst tourists, mainly amongst the younger ones. There's a lot going on in both the day and night, due to its plethora of bars and restaurants. During your visit, spend a morning at the Heraklion Archaeological Museum. This museum alone makes visiting Heraklion well worth it, as it boasts one of the best collection of ancient Greek artefacts in the whole country. Learn about the ancient Minoans, the Cretan way of life, and truth behind myth. To finish off your day, you can take a stroll along the harbour and maybe grab yourself a drink and a treat. Compared to Hania, we felt that Heraklion wasn't as pretty and was too busy to be enjoyed fully, but it's definitely worth a visit, especially if you're looking to visit the museum. So there you have it, our guide on the top things to see and do in Crete. If there are any other places we haven't mentioned in our video that are worth checking out, then please let us know in the comments below. Crete is a huge island with a lot to offer, so we'll most certainly be back in the future. We particularly want to explore the south of the island, which is completely different to the busier and more touristic north. Thanks for watching, be sure to visit our website for more travel guides on Crete and please subscribe for more holiday content.